Well, everyone, here we are. We're, uh, we're going to do a coaching call with Shay. Um, she reached out. And so what we're going to do, hopefully, is offer some some clarity, some confidence in you moving forward. So, Shay, tell me a little bit. Again, I have really no no real idea where you're coming from. So give me a little bit of a history of your, your weight, your experience, you know, where you're at and where you want to go. Okay. So um, I suppose I've had weight issues since high school, you know, from like 15, 16, which is a bit normal for, for young girls, but I never managed to really shake it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I traveled a bit after high school uh, in my twenties and I managed to be quite a healthy weight. Yep. And then really my weight gain is about laziness. I won't even lie. I'm, I'm short, I'm small boned and I just, I know the things to do, but I just yep. can't seem to follow through and everything around life uh, revolves around food. So celebrations and it's this occasion and that occasion occasion and working and working late you know sure. really um i've never had any health issues yeah. um that are related to weight uh and generally i'm healthy but i know that i'm overweight uh and that's just carried on i'm currently 44 i'll be 45 in may okay of this year um and i was actually i've had a little boy who's three years old so four years ago i was pregnant relatively healthy pregnancy um and my, my weight has fluctuated between oh my gosh how did I get here like how did I so much weight and then working really hard for a long time to lose the weight and then I'll keep it off for maybe a year or two and then suddenly it's like I wake up and I'm like why, why don't my clothes fit me anymore so like just really unconscious living um and obviously with the with three-year-old I've got to be busy I've got to keep him active and I want to be healthy I want to live a long life to see my children grow I've got two daughters as well um so that's me in a nutshell it's just back and forth knowing what to do and just not really seeing it through so in December I decided that enough is enough um at a weight of over 102 kilograms mm -hmm. and um and I just, you know, tired all the time, really low energy. And I decided that I would use December to eat everything I craved, whatever I wanted, because come 1 Jan, I'm quitting yep. sugar and I just want a healthy life. And I did that, actually. Great. So, but I need to do more. So okay. I've lost just over seven and a half kilograms, uh, okay. mostly focused on intermittent fasting, which okay. really works for me because... I find that it simplifies my life. And because my my day job and family are busy, yep. um, I, I find that if I keep it really simple, it works for me because then I, I don't have areas because yeah. as soon as I've got a gray area, I'm all out. So I'm all in or all out, really uh, yeah, extreme. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so I can't have a bite of a chocolate. I yep. will finish it. I can't have you know, a little muffin. I'll eat the cake. And sure. so that's why I have to be really strict with myself, but it works for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it, so it works for you for so a little it's... while. <laughs> as I was, as so I've set myself for a... Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Like you say, like I focus so much on the number. I'm like, well, on my birthday, I must weigh this and I must do that. And, and that obviously isn't working for me. So. Yeah, sure, sure. Fair enough. So I think I, if anything, you'll pull out of this a new way to kind of look at things. You know, um, it's not because the way I always approach weight loss, it's more of you figuring out what works for you. It's like, it's like learning like an instrument. There's no, nothing I say, Oh, do this. And then all of a sudden it's all fixed. It's kind of, it's more about kind of a philosophy and yeah. we'll get into some specifics as well. Um, but it's a lifelong yeah, forever. Is, I mean, absolutely. So I've been playing around on TikTok mostly because my kids are there and I want to see what they're <laughs> liking and sharing sure. and then stumbled upon you and I'll spend uh -huh. hours just watching you live and engaging which has been really great for me as well right. like just knowing that even though I'm typing and you speaking there's like a voice and someone that like gets me right sure, sure. that has been so helpful like I discovered your TikToks already in early Jan and um, despite the time difference like I really enjoy them and I go look for them I've listened to the hypnosis one the like you know everything that you say started making sense to me so now i actually look out for them sure uh, which is why i reached out to you because i think that like hopefully you can help me yeah yeah <laughs> definitely my head in the right <laughs> for sure so the first step is always like having a clear congruent goal because one thing you've repeated over and over it sounds like is like you kind of spontaneously all of a sudden it's like i gotta lose the weight you get to kind of a high weight and that's a trigger point for you to say okay and then you enact the real strict stuff and you do that till you lose some weight. And then what happens at that point? At some point, you just kind of 
somehow you just kind of get off track before you realize it or what? So it would be um, like, again, an event, being invited to a birthday and then going and then thinking, oh, well, I've already lost five or six, you know, I'm allowed something small, but then I really battle to get back in the game. So yeah. then that happens like for a couple of weeks and then yep. I'm like, oh, shucks, you know, like focus again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's a common, that's not unusual, right? A lot of people have that. So like you said, for you, it's all or nothing. And when you're all, everything's going great. But the second you make a mistake, it kind of kicks you off track pretty hard. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, let's take a step back now. Where are you right now? Cause you mentioned where, where are you from? How far are you from your ideal weight? Um, so probably 30 kilograms. Okay. 30 kilos. Yeah. And I yeah. also use that concept where you said like choose a different number because yeah, of, yeah. you know, and I applied that. So I'm wanting to weigh anywhere around like 65, around 65 kilograms, which I know for my height and weight and also for the clothes that I fitted into yep. when I felt my best um, and had the most energy, that's more or less the weight. You know, okay. if it's if it's 67, fine. If it's 62, like I've stopped being so fixated on the number, but I've got my pair of denim jeans I want to fit into. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, let me ask you this. When is the last time you've been at that weight, that goal weight? Five years ago. Okay. And how was it when you were there? Amazing. You liked Absolutely it? Absolutely amazing. Yes. All right. It lived up to the hype. <laughs> Yes, it did. And, you know, I wasn't like super skinny. I was just at a healthy weight, but I just I had the energy that I had and I just I felt good in the clothes that I wore and I was I had the energy to exercise and I was mostly eating healthfully. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let me, on, on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being really hard, how difficult was it for you to kind of live the way you needed to to live at around 65 kilos? It was relatively easy. It okay. was just pure bad habit and knowingly making bad choices. Oh, okay. Um, and going off the reservation. So, yeah. Got you. Self control. <laughs> what, what was triggering that? It, knowingly, knowingly making bad decisions. What, what was going on there? Um, mostly like work stress, and okay. that encompasses me. And I, I'm an emotional eater, um, yep. so I'll just eat the feelings and get on with it. Um, sure. Um, yeah. Okay. If I get super stressed, I eat and eat. Yeah. So your biggest challenge is emotional eating, stress eating. Yeah. Right. If it wasn't for that, it'd be pretty easy for you to live around 65 kilos. Yes. yes. Okay. Great. Great. Um, so we're going to get to some of those specifics, but the first thing I want to do is I want to shore up the goal. What most people do, even if they've been listening to me is they, it's so hard not to just think in numbers, right? Number on a scale, size, clothes. Yes. And so we want to make this mean more, you know, I always say that take your weight loss and wrap it in personal development. Well, what that means is you want to come up with more meaning for what we're doing here, because if it's just about a size on a scale, just about, you know, the size clothes you're in, nah, you know, you can kind of come and go with it. Right. If it's about like yeah. the mom you're going to be, if it's about, you know, the, the person you're going to live as that's way more motivating and you're way more uh, committed to that. Right. So, um, Tell me a little bit, Definitely. and you kind of hinted at some of these things. Shay at 65 kilos, what is that version of you beyond just the physical, how you look part? Tell me a little bit about that Shay mm. versus the 100 kilo Shay. What are the differences? That is the mom that can get up and take the little one, you know, bike riding and walking and kicking ball and having the energy to really be present in the things that matter especially yeah. at these formative years um it also allows me to do things for me you know go for a hike um just be more active and just feel more confident in the clothes that i'm wearing because i sure, am sure. also um you know a senior member of my team and i want to feel confident and i yeah. think that i hide behind the confidence of my weight as well yeah. um and that needs to shift so yeah, just overall more energy, happier, feeling good, um, and just knowing that I'm going to live longer. You know, I yeah. want to see my yeah. my kids through all their firsts right. and and enjoy those moments. Yeah, for sure. Um, so um, that's what I want to yeah, dig in a little bit. Me. Yeah, sure. So I want to dig in a little bit to you mentioned kind of the work stress. 
the emotional eating is sometimes what throws you off track, right? But what I want to focus on here for a second is when you're eating well, when you're in the flow, when you know you're you're getting mm -hmm. close to 65 kilos, you're living there, it feels like that's who you are. How does that version of you deal with work stress, life stress, mom stress? I exercise um, or I um, do something that I enjoy doing, like a hobby or, um, yeah. Great. So when you, when you exercise, so, so you have a, a crappy day at work, you're stressed out, your, your kid's being a pain in the ass, you're, you're stressing out. What do you do when you're at 65 kilo Shay? What does that version of you do when you go exercise, when you do a hobby? How does that help you kind of process those emotions as opposed to just going to the food? What's the difference there? Um, I feel like I physically get it out of my system mm -hmm. rather than pushing it down with the food. Oh, yeah. okay. And what's the accumulated effect of that? What, so again, I mean, there's, there's doing it one time, but there's doing it for a month at a time. What's the difference between those two paths when you're eating the food and kind of pushing it down versus when you kind of allow it to kind of be processed and, and get rid of it? How does that kind of accumulate those two paths? When you, when you keep doing the food, how does that affect you? Let's start there. When you stick with the food in order to deal with those emotions, what yeah. is the accumulated effect of that over a couple of weeks or months? A real fogginess and mm -hmm. um, I can't focus and it just um, pulls me down and then I start feeling bad and guilty and then the mm -hmm. guilt accumulates and then I'm just stuck in this ball of, you know, negative self-talk and I'm just never going to be able to and you're just always going to be forever and all of that like really horrible self-negative talk yeah, yeah. Um, and I hear myself doing it and I just keep going there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so it's almost like you get trapped in that way of thinking. It just becomes a whole trap almost the more you do it. Right. Yes, exactly. And then that perpetuates like the bad feeling, eating more, and then the negative self-talk. It's just the spinning wheel. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so that process is going on and then it, it kind of has to go on for a while till you get to a real painful point of a really high weight. And then you have to get triggered back to being the other way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The sad day when you have to like pull up your pants and you're like, oh, the zipper, what? And the then it's boom. Fit. Suddenly, Yeah. Sure. sure. <laughs> All right. So, so you would agree that, that the motivation's there. I mean, you really want to be 65. It's been somewhat recent. So you're familiar with it. You know, it's really great for you. That's really a weight that works yes. for you, a way of living that works. Yes, right. definitely. Yeah. So it sounds like the big, the big challenge you have now, let me ask you this, because five years ago is not too long ago. So you can remember, did you notice yourself getting stressed and turning towards the foods? Did you notice that process starting to happen? Yes. And what was the internal dialogue going on there? Because you sound pretty aware that that was kind of happening. And what was going on there to try and change that? Um, so I found I was making excuses, okay. right? Um, and I just kept perpetuating the excuses. So it was, uh, I was also, um, I got married four years ago. Okay. And so it was like the excitement leading up to that. Um, yeah, yeah. And then being pregnant pregnant and then you know then it's this one's birth and then it's the excitement of the baby and it's and it's just excuses of saying i can go to the party and i can have a cupcake and that's it i don't have to have the cupcake and the tart and the this and three glasses of wine knowing you know because then i would say oh you know tomorrow and yeah, yeah. You know, we all know what happens tomorrow so yeah. for sure all right <laughs> Got it, got it. Yeah. And so right now, like where you're at sounds like you're in a pretty good place. Like you sound like you're on a good path currently. Yes. Right. Okay. Thank goodness. And so right now it's more about figuring out how to maintain this long term. How not for this to be another cycle? Because yeah. I know at 44, going on 45 with the family that I have and everything that I have to live for, it is now or never. Because yeah. if I don't do it now, it's going to get harder and harder. And it just doesn't feel like it's ever going to happen. And I know that I'm not supposed to be the weight that I am. I know that, you know, I'm supposed to have a healthy, full life. And that is what I deeply desire. I want that. Right. So right. I don't want to reach this goal because I know I will. I'm like set at it. like, yeah. And then have the same thing happen again. I have to keep this off for the rest of my life. It has to be part of my lifestyle, not right. just a short-term goal. Yeah. Great. Great. So right now, I mean, you're, you're, you're a month and a half into it, right? Yes. 
Okay. So that's good. Yeah. Are you feeling wobbly? Are you feeling a hundred percent on track? Where are you at? I'm starting to feel wobbly, right? Okay. Yeah. So, cause we've already had our girls once a month dinner and I look at the bread and I think, oh, don't have the bread. You don't, you don't, you know, all that internal dialogue, fighting with myself. And I think, how did I go through the whole of January with yeah. like just being perfect, uh -huh. you know, perfect, whatever perfect is, sure. uh, sticking to sticking to my intermittent fasting, no carbs, blah, blah, blah. It's sustainable, but I know it's, but what is sustainable? Right. Yeah. So okay. okay. I, at least haven't gained, <laughs> but mm -hmm. it has been like 500 grams there, 300 grams down, 200 grams up, 200 grams down. So sure, sure, sure. Feb has already been wobbly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Now, again, I, I, I see it. <laughs> it's great that you would recognize that. Okay. Because a lot of people are dealing with exactly what you're talking about, especially right about now, because a lot of people kicked off the new year exactly like what you're saying. Okay, I'm going to be perfect with it. Yes. And at some point this comes up. So I'm really glad that we get to talk about this because again, I can't promise anything, but I can promise that you'll have some new insights. I, I can promise you that. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, I would say the first thing, and I think you recognize this, is your method has been and continues to be all or nothing. Right? Yes. And yes. so that's a tough place to be. It is. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, it's hard for anyone to be perfect. I'm not perfect with my eating. I'm not, I don't build my weight mastery around being perfect with my eating. Cause I know I can't be mm. perfect with my eating. Right. I had a horrible yes. weekend of eating in terms of, I ate lots of sugar and lots of kind of desserts, cookies, stuff like that. So but the thing is it's built into my strategy. Okay. So now it's Monday. So mm. now I get back on track clean again, yes. you know? Yes. And so I, I well, your strategy here is seven days a month a year of perfection so that you can get to your goal, right? Is there any days for you to kind of just like take a break Basically. and- Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, is there any strategy to build in? Is there any like kind of off yeah, days so, at all? Um, yeah, so I have like Saturdays and Sundays that I'm a bit more lenient, but okay. then when it comes to Monday, I'm, you know, back to being strict. Although in okay. January, I never had lenient days, yeah. but in Feb I have, and that's why I've been like, feel like I'm battling a lot more in February because I, I have to use a lot more brain power to yep. be like, you know, stick to this. This is why you want it. So I've made a list um, and I made this list in December and I've refined it, you know, every day I look at it of like, why do I want to lose weight? Why am I on this journey? Okay. So that that keeps me from going totally off the reservation. Yeah. Great. Great. That's super. If you can stay in that mindset, it'll, it'll do you better. I know like, cause what happens is the way you're looking at it now, it sounds like is if you're perfect, everything's great and everything's going fine. If you make a mistake or if you feel a lot of cravings and you give into a little bit, it feels like you totally let yourself down and you screwed up. True. Yes. And I feel that like, it's a, it's a feeling that I have like, Oh my God, how did I allow this to happen? Like, yeah. you know, and as soon as that negative self-talk comes in, I say, stop, like you chose to allow these few treats, you know, you're getting back on Monday. So, you know, like allow it. And it's tough though. Like my brain isn't listening to me. It's that old like monkey brain going, you can't do this. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I would say, so, so again, well, I'm a hypnotist. So everything I do, and you know, this is it's all what's going on up in your head, your internal dialogue. We're all our own best or worst yes. hypnotist. Right. And so we're always talking mm -hmm. to ourselves and up our head and it's, it drives everything, you know? And so like, for example, this is the amazing part. You could be seven kilos down, 10 kilos down success. Yay. Great job. But our head could be saying all this stuff that makes us feel terrible. Right. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to make this a more congruent process. And the first step is it's one you're not going to like, because I know you want to lose the weight as quick as possible and you want to get to your goal as quick as possible. So I understand that. I, I totally get that. Yes. Um, I knew this but, was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I know you did. I just wanted to warm you up first before this one comes, because we all just want fast results, right? Like it's just normal yeah. and natural. Um, yes. But if we can start trading you know, the, the focus on fast results with a focus on forever results, you know, so that you can imagine, you know, Shay at 55 at 65 kilos, Shay at 65 mm. at 65 kilos, 
you at 120 at 65 kilos. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, that's the, the trade-off you see. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the other side of that is that we also make this a more enjoyable process. Okay. So that. <laughs> it, <That's> I, right. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, here's the fun part. I, I'm not just going to, I'm just going to make you, you have to wait out and hold out because what you can, you, you almost have to, I hate the words tricking your mind, but it is a little bit like that where you understand your mind and how it operates. So mm -hmm. your mind is more motivated by losing weight quickly. Like, like that's a motivating idea to your mind. No yes. doubt about it. Yes. However, that is also usually a very short term strategy. You know, you know, from your experience, Definitely. yeah, that'll probably work for you to get down another maybe 10 kilos. And then it's just, it's white knuckles. You have to hold on harder and harder and harder. Right. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Yes. So where do we shift? How can we shift this so that you're working on something that's instant gratification that's simultaneously going to help you master your weight. From what I hear, I'm hearing a lot of it comes down to the emotions. Mm. Where are you at emotionally? Work stress, life stress, because now you've added on diet stress on top of those. But where are you at with all three of those right now? So um, life stress, not that much. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And life stress generally, it's um, the, the external factors. So um, things are out of my control. So I'm learning just to accept it. You know, in South Africa, we've got some stresses um, and that's just the way it is. You know, sure. things don't work perfectly and it's okay. Um, work stress, probably around eight out of 10, you know, pretty high, but that is what it's always going to be because of the room that I'm in. So I do need to deal with that better. Okay. Um, and... The weight stress, I think I'm feeling probably like a 50% stress um, because I'm not where I wanted to be by February, but I have been able to wearing to um, wear some clothes that I haven't worn in a while. That's yep. a motivator for me. So I'm like, oh, finally, it's not, you know, my butt's not sticking out. The shirt <laughs> comes mm -hmm. over. It looks good. The, the sleeves aren't tight. All those things. And again, like to feeling that like feels really good and sure. motivates me to keep going. So um, work stress is the biggest stress. Um, but because I'm doing the intermittent fasting, I don't like I'll walk down to the cafeteria and I'll just turn around and walk back up because my colleagues know and they support me. So I daren't, you know. Um, sure. But at home on a weekend, we know, you know, when no one's there to judge me, it's just my husband and my kids that are very supportive as well. It's easier to cheat um, yeah. and, and slip. So, so, yeah. Okay. So here's the thing is that, so I'm, I'm, I'm beelining right into that work stress. That, that seems to be a main trigger here. Because let me ask you this. If magically the work stress dropped down to a two, three, would it be easier to influence your eating and, and the weight ultimately? Yes, yes okay. absolutely. Yes. And if your work stress, if you, if you were able to lower that a bit, would that help you again, kind of be the mom you want to be the wife you want to be the person you want to be? Definitely. Because the work stress, like I put so much energy into work because I'm really career focused and I love mm -hmm. it. Um, but I put so much energy into that, that by the time I get home, now I've got to think about the eating stuff stuff then there's yeah. very little left in my bucket for my family which is actually my biggest priority right yeah because if i'm run over by a bus in a week they'll replace me at the office my family will be changed forever <laughs> it's the reality yeah. i think in anyone's job right yeah. we are replacing yeah. but um i really like i sit at home on a, on a weekend and i think oh i just wish i had the energy to get up and go and do stuff you know yeah. with with my little one and i do but it takes so much effort and it shouldn't yeah. not at not at my age. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So so this becomes, this is where I would start to make, this would be my biggest focus because what's more important, if tomorrow you could change instantly one thing, you could wake up your goal weight. I know what you're probably going to say, but it's like you could wake <laughs> up your goal weight. <laughs> this question, I'm not going to ask this, but let's just say, imagine tomorrow you could wake up and your work stress was cut down to like a two out of 10. And then you got the benefit of being able to do the things you want to do with your kids um, you were able to prepare meals easier. You just every all life just kind of went smoother. Um, that would be a nice thing. Yes, definitely. Yeah, of course, right? So, and if you did that, if that did magically happen, that the stress for work went down to a two out of ten, that would also support you in mastering your weight as well. Yes. Right. 
So this is what we want to do because the weight loss alone is not really the problem because as you said, you can force yourself to eat a certain way. It takes a lot of energy and you can do that for a while. But what ultimately is deciding your weight is how much stress you're experiencing, how much emotional mm -hmm. stress work-wise, life-wise, mom-wise you're experiencing, right? Yes. That seems to be the deciding factor. You can fight against that for a while, but if that stress remains high, it's going to be very unlikely that you're going to be able to master your weight long-term. Yes, yes. Okay. Agreed. And the other thing is that if you could get a handle on your work stress and stress in general in a real sustainable way that felt good and allowed you to really live as the person you wanted to be, um, that would be a real game changer for you in your life. That would be one of the most profound shifts you could make in your entire existence as a human. Right. So what yes, strategy definitely would. Yeah. What strategies do you, are you using right now to deal with work stress? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I am trying to manage the workload that I have and mm -hmm. delegate. I do like to control things a bit um, because then I know that they get done really well. Sure. I almost said the word perfect. You can pick up a little pattern there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I just, uh, so I've started delegating and I've started um, just pushing back on things and timelines and not trying to do everything at once. So sure. just overall... Overall, better time management. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm also trying to, like, when I'm not, when I'm at home, to not work. So yeah, that's yeah, okay. like some boundaries there. Yeah. Um, and when I'm at work, to be just really focused, get as much out as I can. And when I'm at home, to be present. Sure. Cool. So now let's go. We're going to go into your work a little bit just to talk about how you can work in the best way possible. So, again, notice, I guess I just want to make this clear to you and, and anyone watching this, that we start off with weight. This is always the same story for me. I can tell you this is 100 out of 100 people I work with. It's we start with the weight and kind of the we call them presenting problems, all the things you mm -hmm. think are the problems. I can't stop myself from eating. I can't do this. I can't do that. And we always get to a deeper reason why. OK, mm -hmm. and the so I don't want you to be like, oh, we stopped talking about weight loss. We, we are still talking about weight loss, I promise you. But we're just talking it from a different angle because there's a, a main pressure point that's never being dealt with and has not been dealt with this entire time. Mm -hmm. You've been focused on weight for mm -hmm. your entire life, practically, and you never recognize that there's a at least in this case, there's more than one. But there's one big one here that if you're not able to get a better handle on the stress from your work, losing weight is always going to be. A challenge does, does that make sense 100 yeah right yeah like i feel like you've taken me on a journey so i'm with yeah. you <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and this is where it gets fun this is the fun part right is because in a weird way you want to the ideal is you want to make your weight loss you want to make it about something else but that's that's something else that's also going to help you lose weight because your work is something like that's a permanent motivated thing right? Your weight mm -hmm. motivation comes and goes. Let's just be honest. You think about it all the yes. time, but your actual motivation to actually take effort and intermittent fast, you know, stop eating as many carbs, that, that action, you only tap into that every couple of years at most. Yes, absolutely. And when I'm not in it, yeah. I'm trying to figure out how did I, where's the switch? <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, <If> I... <laughs> like where did, where did it get switched off and where can I switch it back on again? And I sit for ages and days thinking how did i get so motivated say i'm so yeah, glad you said that thank you for saying that and everyone listens i want you to recognize this is what everyone does i work with almost exclusively i, I don't want to say just smart people but people that have a lot of mental energy uh, people that are overthinkers right and so it's yes. like you have this super computer but what happens is you just said it out loud is that you're trying to diagnose the problem you think that mm. you're one little cognitive breakthrough away of understanding what your problem is to make everything change. And it's complete bullshit. I promise you that is not the problem. The problem yeah. is much more simple and obvious. And it's more than this. So I don't want to I don't want to simplify it to the point of ridiculousness. However, I want to point out that the core problem here is the work stress is wiping you out to the point that you can't eat well. Um, it's very difficult if you get motivated to do, do the things to live the life you want to lead, never mind just the weight, to be the mom you want to be, the wife you want to be, the person you want to be. Mm -hmm. So we're making this more important because as you've noticed, as important as weight is to you, that motivation to actually do something about it comes and goes, okay? Mm -hmm. Your work motivation is 100% of the time. True? Yeah, true, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 
So notice this point. What a lot of people do is they try and make the weight loss more important. Okay. You've been doing that for the last month and a half. You, you've made, yes. you forced yourself to make the weight loss more important. Right. Yes. Um, but what's already more important to you, like way more important to you is your work, your family. These are way more important things. Okay. Yes. So instead of trying to make something more important, let's just identify what's already important to you and wrap the weight loss around that. Okay. And so that happens in a couple of different ways. It doesn't seem the level we're talking about may not seem like it's about weight loss, but it's the level below or two levels below. And again, it goes back to that work stress. And this is how it is for most people that they're, they have life stressors that are making it almost impossible for them to really gather the mental, emotional, physical energy to create the changes they want. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got to take a step back with a prevention mindset and say, okay, if I look at my life, where's most of the energy going? Well, it's going, a lot of it's going to work, work stress, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. And so the first thing we want to do, this is where I'm a big proponent of like a lifestyle approach, lifestyle systems, because your thinking and quality of, of thought and energy is relevant to how you're living. And so if you're working 70 hours a week, it's going to be really hard to lose weight and start making good health decisions because you're just yes. spent, you know? I'm not saying it's impossible, everyone, but it, but it's hard. And so I think we want to take a step back and ask this weird question that no one asks. How can I make my weight loss easy? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good. Yes. Now, no one thinks that because subconsciously, everyone thinks the harder it is, the faster the results are going to be. You know, mm -hmm. so subconsciously, we're always, yeah, we want yeah. the fastest results and the hardest plan. So we never even ask the question, how can I make this easier for myself? And yeah, about this one, how can I make it more enjoyable? Oof. <laughs> what? Yeah. I've never <laughs> in my 44 years considered like, how can this be more enjoyable? I, it's course. just never crossed my mind, which, Good. which now sounds a bit ridiculous. No, it does. Again, I always say, I, like, like what, what all my coaching sessions, and I do this to myself, it's like so often the solutions that are the most valuable have been like, they're right there the whole time. We mm -hmm. just don't see them, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's because that's literally hypnosis where the way we're thinking literally creates our reality. You know, it literally dictates what we see and, and how we approach things. Okay, so looking at the work stress, I think, now again, this is one session. I mean, I work with people, it's a, just my program, for example, it's eight weeks. I mean, we're consistently working, tweaking, identifying, figuring out things. But this is the process, you know, this is an example of the process in one way. So you will do this in other areas with other things. But the th big thing I see right now, that the biggest lever you could shift in yourself and in your weight and in your health and happiness in life is if you could manage the work stress more effectively. Mm. OK, yes. um, that would help you because, again, you, you know, when you're really focused and motivated, you kind of know what to do to get the results. Right. Mm -hmm. So right now you would like to feel more certainty, more confidence that you're on the right path, that everything's working. And you'd like to just ride this path out for right now. True. Yes. True. Yeah. We can optimize it and get it better along the way. That's a, that's a different conversation right now. What would help you most is if you could kind of center yourself, calm yourself down and consistently feel like the Shea that you felt like January 1st. Mm -hmm. That'd be yes. nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, Absolutely. by the way, real quick, I just want to say this, and this is just proof, everything's self-hypnosis, okay? So we can be pretty sure that January 1st, you were thinking in your head a lot different than what you're thinking here February 20th, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's weird. It doesn't make much sense because you would think, six weeks into the game, like you'd be thinking more like the person you wanted to be thinking like, right? Exactly, right? I oh, know. Even this morning, I was thinking, you know, ahead of our call, like, how am I not like, keep, you know, how, where, where? yeah, exactly. It's amazing. <laughs> now, I just want to point this out as evidence and proof that the weight, the weight doesn't dictate your happiness, unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. it's part of it. It is a part. It's a component for sure. But the weight in of itself doesn't make you happy because you would have thought January 1st. Now, I know you're not actually at the goal you have, right? but any time last year, if you dropped 10 kilos, you would have been thrilled. Yes, absolutely. Right? And yet here you sit feeling discouraged that you've only dropped 10 kilos. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's funny how <laughs> our mind works, isn't it? Again, it's just you, you've had all this success in one way, um, weight wise. Weight wise, you've had this success. Mm. Now you've done it in a very, you've done it in the same way you've always done it, which you associate to failure, right? You're just kind of waiting for yourself to stop now. Absolutely. And uh, it's looking at uh, 
how much I should have done by now. You know, that blueprint that I had on 1st of Jan, and this is how it's going to be, and blah, blah, blah. And I wrote it down. You know, I wrote it down. Obviously, it's going to work because I wrote it down. No. (laughs) <laughs> I wrote it down. And we do, by the way. So again, if anyone out there, I think like learning cognitive biases is a very great thing to do. I would look those up at some point, look up some cognitive biases. One of them is called the planning fallacy. Okay. So that when we make a plan, when we write out how much weight we're going to lose and what time period, we always assume the best case scenario. It's just the easiest thing for our brain to do. So typically when we make a plan for what we're going to follow, it's usually way wrong. It's way underestimated. You know, Mm -hmm. and we just do that across the board. All of us do that. All humans do that. And so it's nice to know that. So you can you can't get rid of it, but you can recognize we all do that and strategize against it a bit. Um, But okay, I want to get back to the work stress, because I think that's the engine. I think that work stress, it's uh, it's it's using up a lot of energy, mental, emotional and physical energy that would be really useful for you to help master your weight. Right. Yes. Um, okay. So when you're at your best work, work is work. It's not going to change. It's not gonna become less stressful short of, you know, learning how to become a better manager, a better delegator, you know, developing those skills for sure will help that. Um, but there's always going to be stress from work. That's just the nature of work. Right. So when you're at your best with work, when things are stressful, but you're handling it the best, what's been going on in your life? Like what are the strategies you've relied on for when things are kind of running the smoothest with work? even when work's not running smooth, if that makes sense. <laughs> you know, it's, I think it's, um, I'm just really efficient and I'm focused and I've got to-do lists and I've got, you know, things just working. But I also like throw hours and hours and hours at it because I have this thing where I want it to be perfect. Mm-hmm. The presentation must be perfect and the report must be perfect. And I have to let go of some of that stuff. Um, but when it's, going smoothly I've just I'm organized I'm getting things done I'm ticking things off my list I'm delegating to people and it just feels like I'm in control and I'm achieving the objectives that I've set out for myself yeah great great so what I'm hearing is and this is what everything comes back to is kind of managing your state okay because just real simple we have two nervous systems so we got a sympathetic fight flight or freeze nervous system Right. So when we get stressed, when we get worried, when we get anxious about whatever. Now, again, we can have this triggered all the time. We don't have to be just chased by a lion. We could all of a sudden know we have a report coming up. Right. Yes. And we've got something, <laughs> some job um, deadline coming up and we start going into a fight, flight or freeze mode. Right. So so mm-hmm. if you say you have like give me a typical work stress you might have, like what's something that might kind of trigger some stress for you? Um, just the amount of work that needs to come out on deadline. Yeah. Deadline. Yeah. Work. So we'll just yes. say deadlines, right? Deadlines. That, that's the, a, a, a constant never ending perpetual source of stress in your life. Yes. Right? Now the good thing to know is that there's reality, there's external reality, there's our interpretation, and then there's our experience of it, right? Because you would agree sometimes the deadlines are always there, but sometimes you kind of handle and manage the whole thing better than other times. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, I look at them and sometimes I'm like, yeah, deadlines, let's go. And I'm just bash, bash, bash. And other times I'm like, frick, sure. deadlines, how? <laughs> That's my mindset. And it's the yeah. same stuff. Nothing really has changed except there might be more. But um, yeah. I don't know what really gets me from looking at the same stuff differently. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what happens. So again, the process I'm always looking at is really understanding the kind of the subconscious processes, the things that are running on autopilot. Sometimes I respond in a positive way. Sometimes I respond and I freak out and that's what's happening. Right. But you never really think about how can I influence that? If all of a sudden, if 80% of the time you responded in a, you took it as a challenge and you took it on and you felt good. And if if you, if that little shift happened, your whole life changes because that's a fundamental core. Right. Yeah. So I know because you sometimes approach it as a challenge and sometimes you approach it as a real stress, I know you've got the ability. The problem is that it's kind of just been running on autopilot, that sometimes you mm-hmm. respond this way and sometimes. Not. So you could probably increase that. And so um, the first thing, yeah, it's nervous systems is the first thing, because when you do get freaked out, what ends up happening, fight, flight or freeze, sympathetic nervous system, the blood goes from our brain down to our muscles. And so what happens is we don't think as clearly. We're very reactionary. We're very emotional when our sympathetic mm. nervous system is activated. The other nervous system is our parasympathetic nervous system, our rest and digest when we're calm and relaxed. And then the blood goes black back up to our brain. 
where we can think with our prefrontal cortex, all of our, you know, abilities and resources. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, this, you know, sometimes you're operating on all cylinders and sometimes you're not true. True. So when you're operating on all cylinders, let's just talk about your body for a second. If you're get a deadline coming up, what's kind of the ideal response to it physiologically, physically, how do you want to feel when you're thinking about that deadline? Mm, I want to feel good. I want to feel positive and I want to know that this is how I'm going to do it. Um, and there's my little process and boom, it gets done. Yeah. Now physically, right? How would you breathe? Let's just compare these two for a second, right? Let's just say you got a deadline coming up and you're feeling good about it. How would you breathe thinking about that? Yeah, just normally, I suppose. Just, mm -hmm. um, I might get a bit excited and, you know, a little bit hyper, but not in a way that overwhelms me. I get, if I get overwhelmed, then that's just a runaway train, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how do you know if you're overwhelmed? What's the difference? Um, heart racing, panic feeling a little bit of ang anxiety, but anxious and confusion. Yeah. And then great. I actually freeze. I freeze. I, I don't run and I don't fight. I just freeze and think, what now? Super. I'm a freezer too. That's what I do. And so here's what we want to understand. Anytime we go into a state, because this is kind of just happening. It feels like it's happening outside of yourself in a way, right? It feels like you have no mm -hmm. control over this. It's just either one response or the other. OK, mm. but that's what I discovered is not true. We actually have a ton of response once we realize this is happening. That's the first step. Right. That's why yeah, awareness is always the most important aspect of this whole thing, because we can't fix what we don't know is not what, what we don't know is broken. OK, yes. so I'm going to show you real quick. The easiest way to change how you feel in these moments is changing your physiology. OK, so your state at any moment in time, whether you're stressing out or whether you're taking out as a challenge, it's your state. And so your state starts with your physiology, your muscles, right? Yes. So when you're freaking out and you're feeling overwhelmed, are you tense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <right? laughs> Absolutely. Exactly, right? Very scary yeah. face. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like you get, yeah. you get frozen, right? Frozen, yes. literally. The muscles freeze. And freeze all your muscles for a second and then try and take a deep breath while you keep all the muscles freezed. What happens? It's really possible. Yeah, it's not possible. Yeah. So now your body starts lacking oxygen and starts freaking out, literally, right? You're pulling the brain, mm -hmm. blood from your brain. Your muscles are tight, using up all that blood, and you're not breathing. And this is a state that really, it just kind of builds on itself. And it's like a runaway train, right? Mm. So the first thing you can do to kind of change that is, is awareness first. The next step is relaxing these shoulders. Where do you store the tension in your muscles? Yeah. Shoulders. Yep. Yeah. It feels like everywhere, but like I see myself sitting like this and then hunching over my laptop and, yeah. and like even my face gets pulled in and I see my reflection in my screen. Like, okay. Yeah. You know, I breathe. And I sure. also like, I, just, I feel like I'm expanding, which is so interesting. Like I just feel like everything is expanding, but it mm. actually isn't because I'm so contracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now what I want you to do is just imagine, you're just going to pretend to yourself, what, how do you want to feel in that situation you just imagined in your mind about hunching over the laptop? I want you to imagine you're hunched over the laptop right now. Imagine you're hunched over it the way you were just talking about, okay? Mm -hmm. And now I want you to imagine yourself going into whatever state would be better than that. What would you do? How would you change I'd, your body? I'd breathe and I'd drop my shoulders, uncross my feet and just sit up straight. Yeah. yeah. And when you feel that way, what, what, how does that feel for you? Does it feel any different? Yes. It feels like I'm in control again and less yeah. overwhelmed immediately. That's actually quite interesting. Yeah. Cause you literally are literally, as soon as you relax the muscles, they let go of the blood and then let's go back up to your brain and you start mm -hmm. thinking like a human being and not just like an animal, just a responsive Absolutely. reactive animal. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because you have those resources. That's what's fascinating, isn't it? Like you, you know, in a different situation, same Shay, all of a sudden she responds in a calm, rational way, right? And then other times yeah. it happens and you're freaking out and you're stressing out. But that stress can mm -hmm. go on for days or weeks maybe, right? Absolutely. It, it, yes. Yeah. It changes me. Yes. It change, yeah, it changes all of us. So my suggestion to you, the biggest thing I think you could do for your weight loss would be uh, – do you have like a relaxation routine? Do you, do you have something you do? You mentioned hobbies and exercise. Do you have like a one minute, two minute strategy that you do daily to keep yourself connected to that more relaxed, calm state? 
No, I've thrown them out the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, just like brushing your teeth, you got to do every day to keep your teeth clean. I would suggest, and this is what I suggest with everyone, you know, I, I think hypnosis is a layered. So like in my program, I mean, people get in hypnosis sessions every day and it's like the suggestions are great. That's a great part. But the key part is that every time you listen to a hypnosis se session, you're relaxing, you know, you're relaxing, mm -hmm. you're, you're relaxing your shoulders, your chest, your stomach, your face. And that's really what it is. Those are the big ones, by the way. Shoulders, chest, yes. stomach, face, right? Jaw, mm -hmm. eyes. Um, and you relax that and you breathe a little more fully. And so if you took one minute a day, one minute meditation, where you literally just close your eyes and you just relax these muscles, you begin to breathe more deeply and you do that in the morning, say, you know, what happens is you start to develop. That's the shea you want to be. Right. Yes, that is. There's like an inner shea and an outer shea you want to be, right? Let's, yeah. let's think of it that way. We know the outer shea you want to be 65 kilos, energized, motivated, doing things, all that. Great. But I always suggest that people start from the inside out. Like I always refer to my approach as like an inside out approach to weight loss, because what's the point of changing on the outside? If you keep, if you're going to just be freaking out on the inside, you know, that's going to lead to you being 90, a hundred kilos. That, yes. that, it's that it's that stress within you. And it's not just the stress, it's the stress and what it leads to. That stress mm. leads to eating the wrong foods consistently, yes. right? Yes. Um, it leads to you being tired and exhausted. And why wouldn't it be, right? Think about it. It's like, if, if you do this all day, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like it's tiring physically, yeah. right? So it's just, it's making your gas tank just, you know what I mean? And then the next day you start, you're starting lower and lower and lower and lower and you just feel wiped out. You know, absolutely. And so how could yeah. you be at your best? You know, you got to manage the energy. So what happens is, like you said, you don't have there's nothing in your life that's keeping you that's letting you build this quality up. Right. And again, this is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, it's up to you how much you want to do it. But I like to reduce to the ridiculous, make it as easy and simple as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. Because one minute, one minute is profound. One minute when there's been no minutes, when there's been no yeah. minutes to come, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, one minute is is absolutely life changing. And what happens mm -hmm. is each day you connect to that feeling. And each time you do that, you get better and better at understanding what relaxation feels like. And you start to recognize when the stress is coming. So instead of the stress having to get to a level 10, you can start to recognize that like a two, three, four, starting to ramp up. You can recognize uh -huh. it and you say, let it go. You see? That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And, and that's, you'll, and, and here's the interesting part. So again, I say work because I know work's one of your top motivators. I, I know that's one of the most things you're most, you know, interested in and most committed to. And so, because again, I mean, you got family first and then your work's right here. And then weight's really like down here because weight's, you, you're thinking of it as like a nice little bonus. I'd like to look this way. But mm -hmm. when you compare it to your motivation for your kids and your family and work, it's way up higher. It's, it's consistent all the time. Yes. So I'm not talking about your weight right now. I'm talking about your work because I know that's more motivating to you. Just to be honest, mm -hmm. right? It just is, you know, <laughs> and you can even, yes. yeah, you don't want it to be, you know, you, you want it. You, you don't understand I had a moment why. where I was like, damn, you're right. <laughs> it just is, right? Which yes. is okay. That's completely normal because um, that's just how we are. So we don't have to bullshit ourselves. We can recognize mm -hmm. what is and build around that. It's a much different mm -hmm. process, you know, yes. because you still want to succeed at work. And so if you gave yourself, so the best thing you can do moving forward here is to test this out. Is this true? Is this not true? Who knows? And so what you do is you use all that willpower you've been using and dedicate some of it to a minute a day. So you sit down, you pull your phone out, you set the timer for one minute, and you close your eyes, you relax your muscles, and you breathe more deeply. That's it. And you start after, at, once you've done that and you've experienced it, it's like going to the gym. It's like working out your relaxation muscles, you know? Mm -hmm. And you notice what this feels like. It's like, oh my goodness, this is nice. Um, then you go into work, and now all of a sudden you have a reference point for what it's like to feel relaxed and calm. And now you can mm -hmm. start asking yourself, if I felt more relaxed and calm, how would I deal with this deadline? You see, because you yes. kind of been on autopilot, like you, the deadline's coming and I don't know, it's like maybe most of the time you're stressing out about it. 
sometimes you're calm and relaxed, but you would like to be more calm and relaxed about this, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Or else I'm just like, go, go. Yeah. I've got one speed, go. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. one speed go. See, that's the beauty that, that, you know, I don't know, getting older, it's good and bad, I guess. But, but one of the good things about it is that you're supposed to get wiser. You, yes. you see what I mean? It's taking that step back. And, that, and that's why mm -hmm. I always say like taking a step back. Cause we usually live life first person. And so to yeah. the process of taking a step back and looking at ourselves from a different angle, I and mean, that's what this session is here. It's basically Absolutely. you looking at yourself from a different angle and um, you can start to notice a lot of interesting things that you can improve pretty quickly and mm. easily. This is one of those leveraged behaviors that if you, you commit right. one minute a day, right, <laughs> it makes quite a shift, you know, mm. because what it does is in the beauty I love about this approach is that it's really so it's this is all about Shay. This is about Shay because Shay kicks ass. You know, you kick ass. Right. But you're trying to you're so busy trying to think about why you're not kicking ass. But you're the more you think about that, the more stressed you're getting. Do you see yes. that? Right. That's crazy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. it's making you more stressed. And so you're getting it's like you're going deeper and deeper into a tunnel where you can only see one thing. And so mm -hmm. the real solution is to bring yourself back and realize I, I am an ass kicker in the world. And you know you are. You know what I, I mean? Am. Yeah, that's what I mean, right? <laughs> and that's where this starts from. You yeah. yeah. You're connecting to that power. And that power exists within you being more relaxed and calm physically. You relaxing mm -hmm. mentally and then just accepting what is. Because what is, is Shay's an ass kicker. Do you see what I mean? That's a nice process. Now we say, mm -hmm. okay, now connect, ass kick and engaged. Now what I want to do. You see what I'm saying? It's a I different love that. Than, yeah, right? it down. <laughs> yeah, you should. It's a lot better than feeling less than, feeling worried, stressing out, freaking out. What's going on? Oh shit, here I go again. I'm going down the same path. Oh God, work's getting harder. Right? Mm. <laughs> that's internal dialogue. Yeah. That's hypnosis. It's all mm. self-hypnosis. And so if we go down that path, that's a great way to feel less than, to feel freaked out, to overeat, to not be in control, all the rest of it. So the first part of it is just mm -hmm. connecting to who we want to be and having a process that you can trust to do that. That's, I think, one of the most important things, because this process works every time you do it. Sometimes it's harder to do it than others. Sometimes you will have a deadline. You will have something and you are feeling some of those real emotions. However, even in that situation, you can bring the stress from like an eight or nine down to a four or five, maybe, you, you know, in the worst case, yeah. even that's a big yes. deal. Right. But most of the time you're going to be able to bring it from a six, seven down to a two, three. And then you recognize when it's ramping up and you but you get a, a sense of that process. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Like just putting in a stop gap so yeah. I can just take a moment to gather myself, have that breathing moment. Um, I think that's really important for me because I just keep going, you know, yeah. and I'm and that ha clearly hasn't been working so this is yeah. amazing thank you <laughs> you're welcome <And> that's <laughs> you the point. simplified in a way that makes it so easy but i've never thought about it like this before yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm an intelligent grown woman you know i'm sure like right. most of your clients are and yeah just the way that you framed it is like an aha moment for me like i don't know if you can see the light i can, bulb I, can here, I can that's, God, awesome. that's really great that's what it is i would say it too like everyone i work with is a smart intelligent person that thinks a lot and we, what you have to realize is it's not the logic it's not the knowledge of what you know mm -hmm. that's going to change your behaviors it really comes down to and this is on this is kind of anticlimactic but it's just it's it's relaxing yourself it's connecting to the person you want to be as much mm -hmm. as possible you see and that person's relaxed and calm and it's it is like a flip switcher you know what i mean it's just it's like it's a completely different way of being in yourself which changes mm -hmm. everything outside of yourself instantaneously if that makes sense, because you yes. know what it's like to be panicky, stressed, and you know what it's like to be calm and relaxed and, and everything instantly mm -hmm. changes outside of you, you see. Mm -hmm. So it's the most leveraged thing you can do. And um, the more you come at it from this place, it helps you with your your family, your work, your weight. Everything improves when you're coming from. I mean, just basically you're, you have more access to your resources. Your prime resources are right up here in your prefrontal cortex. And if you're stressed, intense and frozen, the, you freeze this part out. You you literally pull the blood away from there and you're just like mm. this and you just keep looping through thoughts, very frazzled thinking or kind of. Uh, and so what we want to do is relax and calm down let that blood flow back up here and see the world from this place using all of your resources. You see, it changes everything. Yes. 
you know mm. well, cool cool all right shay well this is awesome yeah this is it's been a lot of fun I, you got it this has been good for you thank you this has been amazing and i've sure. actually uh, saved the ticket you do the meditation i think that's going to be my first one minute thing that i'm going to do every day um Perfect. and have a moment for myself so thank you this has yeah. really been so insightful and welcome, i really Shay. appreciate the time you've spent with me yeah no i appreciate you you're, you're awesome so yeah i appreciate you doing this and um yeah this video will be up there you'll be able to watch it and uh yeah i'll Great. see you on tiktok cheers